Hello and welcome back to another video from Polestar Driver. My name is Sean and it's the first week of May so it's time to look back on the April numbers and all the trips that you guys have submitted uh, during April and so we can review the real world range of our Polestar 2 cars. So if we have a look at uh, the report we can see we've got contributions from eight countries, 70 different contributors, and we have 375 trips logged as of the end of April, covering 27,369 miles or 44,047 kilometers. Here you can see on the progress, um, we've had 91 submissions in April, so another great month of uh, collecting real world data that will help us to work out what the real world ranges of our pulse are to. Our next slide shows contributors so most uh, I think I fitted most of the names onto this page so you'll see your name and the number shows how many trips have been submitted by that person. Thanks to every one of you who has submitted trip data this is really useful and helps us to get an accurate calculation of real world range. This next uh, slide shows us the top contributors of all time. So you'll see on the list, uh, myself at the top of the list with 62 trips and 4,164 miles logged. And there you can see as we go down the list, I think there's about 20 names on this list. Uh, that's all I could fit onto one page. So if you want to see your name on that list, submit more trips and push your name up the list. The next page shows us the top contributors for April. So top of the list in April is Ottima, who's logged 19 trips covering 748 miles or 1,204 kilometers. So again, if you're one of our top contributors in April, thank you very much for submitting your data. I really appreciate it. And keep submitting your trips and we can keep collecting this data and calculating the real range. From May, there will be a the person who comes uh, top of the list for trips submitted in May will receive a personalized report of their own data which I'm busy creating and hopefully that will give you uh, some incentive to submit more trips. Next page shows us the consumption overall. So since I started collecting data in September last year um, through to January is when we started receiving contributions from all of you guys and you can see that since January we had 41.4 kilowatt hours per 100 miles and in April that's down to 32.2 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. The next page shows us the PDRW number that's a Pulsar Driver real world range and here you can see in April we achieved 237 mile average uh, across 91 trips that were submitted or 381 kilometers equivalent. On the top right hand side you can see uh, the average over all the months. So currently we are averaging 220 miles range or 355 kilometers. And then you can compare that to the WLTP or the EPA ranges. So currently the gap between the overall range and WLTP quoted numbers is 24.6%. However, the gap to the EPA range is only 5.5%. So not far off. And if you have a look at April's number, 237 miles, that's actually more than the EPA range of 233. Next page shows us the same kind of information, but this is recorded in miles or kilometers per kilowatt hour. 
and you can see in April the number we achieved was 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour or 5.1 kilometers per kilowatt hour which is slightly up from March which was 3.1 and 4.9 so again looking better there overall across all the months we are looking at 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour or 4.7 kilometers per kilowatt hour all of these numbers are based on 375 entries in the system the next page shows you the range I've filtered this list to include only names that have submitted more than three trips and there you can see coming out on top is Davo BE from Germany and his current range is 276 mile average or 442 kilometer average great results I wish my car went that far if you look down the list I'm somewhere down near the bottom I'm only averaging 223 miles so very interesting Dave, Dave OBE well done great job here we can see the range by country so the blue one on the top is those trips that have been submitted in miles and the peach one on the bottom is those that have been submitted in kilometers and in miles we've only got uh, basically UK uh, submissions but down the bottom you can see all the different countries that submit in kilometers and how their range is increasing or decreasing across the month so a good comparison there if you're in any of those countries you can see what the average is compared to what you are getting he has the same kind of information just in the table of numbers uh, so good good comparison next we move on to temperature so how does temperature affect uh, the range of the car and if we look at the graph on the bottom right hand corner this shows uh, the combined numbers in the green section uh, these are the combined numbers across all of the entries in the system and obviously you can see we know that temperature less than zero is uh, showing 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour whereas temperatures above 21 degrees are showing as 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour so you can see a big difference there and um, if you have a look to the left you can see what the differences are by month the next page on the report simply shows the same data but by uh, in Fahrenheit so if you are in the US uh, this one may be more interesting to you the next one we look at is preheating crossover so at which point or which temperature is it no longer worth uh, preheating i.e. if you preheat your car above this temperature then you're essentially wasting energy so you can see on the chart that between 8 and 9 degrees celsius or 46 to 48 fahrenheit somewhere in that range is the crossover point so you'll see top right hand side where it's 7 degrees or 45 fahrenheit you can see uh, non preheated trips are only 2.8 while preheated trips are 3.0 but then at 8 degrees you've got 3.0 and 3.0 these are miles per kilowatt hour and then from 9 onwards you can see that the no preheating trips are um, getting a better consumption than the preheated trips so 2.8, 2.7 at 9, 3.1, 3.0 at 10 you can see there the number below the graph shows you how many entries there are with that temperature this page here just shows you the average temperatures across the month so in March the average temperature was 9 degrees Celsius whereas in April it was 10 degrees Celsius across all the trips submitted for that month uh, below that is the same information but in Fahrenheit next page we look at is the wheel size so how does wheel size affect uh, the efficiency of your car and we have three options a 19 inch standard 20 inch standard or 20 inch performance and again looking at the bottom right hand green block 
This is the averages across all entries in the system. You can see the 19-inch standard is coming in at 3.0 miles per kilowatt hour, whereas the performance 20-inch uh, is coming in at 2.6, with the 20-inch standard tire at 2.5. One pedal driving, so this one shows us when you have one pedal driving on off, low or standard. Uh, so standard equals full one pedal driving, off equals coasting. And as you can see, again, bottom right hand side, total across all the months, having one pedal driving off gives you a consumption of 3.0, while uh, low and standard give you 2.9. Now, I thought personally, before I started this project, that these numbers would be quite a bit different to this. But in effect, the difference between having one pedal driving off and one pedal driving not on standard is roughly seven miles across the hundred percent of your battery. So it's not it's much less of a difference than I thought it might be. Again, same thing for air conditioning. So is your air conditioning on or off? Um, again, bottom right hand corner is the numbers across all entries, 256 entries that have submitted aircon on or off data. And you can see the difference again, 3.2 and 3.0, which is a difference of roughly 15 miles across the full capacity of the battery. So not much of a difference there either. Road conditions, so as, um, as we all know, dry conditions equals much better range. And here you can see in the bottom right hand corner, 3.0 in drive conditions, dry conditions across all months, all data, with 2.5 in wet conditions. Uh, next one is driving style. So this is one of those um, things that you can fill in where it's not actually calculated from a number in the car. Uh, this is more of how you think you drove on a particular trip. But it looks like it's um, it's as expected. So eco drivers are getting 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, while the sporty drivers are getting 2.4. So nothing unusual in this one. Average speed. So here we have um, the speeds broken down into different uh, ranges. So first one is less than 30 miles per hour. Next one is 30 to 50 miles per hour. And then the third one is 50 to 70 miles per hour. Now, there's not much of a difference between less than 30 miles per hour and 30 to 50 miles per hour. But then as you go up 50 to 70 miles per hour, you can see there's a bit of a drop, which um, is also expected. So at higher speeds, you'll use up more energy. So next one we look at is distance. So again, we do the ranges, less than 15 mile trip, 15 to 62 miles, 62 to 125 miles, uh, etc. So you can see, as expected, less than 15 mile trips are the worst uh, for efficiency, coming in at 2.6 across all the entries in all the months. And then from between 15 and 125 miles seems to be a constant 3.0 uh, and then dropping off to those uh, those longer trips further than 125 miles. I want to say again thank you to everyone who has submitted data. How do you fare against these numbers? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click on the notification bell and leave a comment. Always glad to interact with you, hear your experiences, and see if we can share any information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.